Rule 101, know when it's time to move on. What's interesting about this season, and um, so much of it is just the truth of who Paul um, Edelstein and Lisa Edelstein, they always say like they must be related somewhere, you know, way back. They just had such chemistry. Obviously the show is called Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce, so it was always our intention that we would follow the Jake story and we'd follow the Abby story and they'd intertwine as they navigate, you know, the ins and outs of trying to parent and all that stuff, but we never thought it would be a story of a romance that maybe might continue. And it was because of Lisa and Paul and the way they act together and it's so satisfying when they face off that we realized there was some serious heat there. You know what I mean, this is? This is last minute jitters. No. And as usual, you are being impulsive and childish. You know why Becca broke up with me? Because I'm not over you. And you're not over me either. Enough. Everybody knows it. Stop. You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to go back to my house to my divorce party because we are getting a divorce. OK, case closed. Paul was struggling a little bit with um, one of his lines. Basically, he says, we sign the documents, but we don't have to file them. And his big moment is he turns around and he says, uh, I sort of buried the lead. I started the conversation when I should have said first, you know, screw me, I am and I probably always will be in love with you. And he was like, I, what, I, what, you know, what's my, and then I, I, he said, broadcast news. And I said, broadcast news. And he went, got it. Um, and so for me, like, I'll never forget that because to me, that I, that's just one of the perfect romantic comedies of all time. That Albert Brooks speech where he says, you know, uh, and I'm in love with you. Look at that. I bury the lead is one of the greatest lines ever written in American cinema. If you're me and a girl. <laughs> Apologies, James Rex. I kind of stole that in a way. We literally tore our lives apart, and we have devastated our children. It would have been even maybe more screwed up if we had oh stayed together God. the way that we were. There is no handbook. You're not the answer lady. I'm anymore. not trying to be Marriage the is not lady. a one-size-fits-all deal. Okay, I don't know. You don't know. All I know is that I am still, and screw me, I probably always will be in love with you. That is a wish for me, that I would have that relationship in my life that you can't quite let go of. I put my career first and, you know, relationships second and still struggle with that. But this fantasy of a relationship that you can't quite ever think of your life without. And that's where Jake and Abby end up. And so know when it's time to move on is good advice, but when do you know? There are moments that I've wished for in my life and the most satisfying real life thing about this episode was standing at the Music Center in Los Angeles with Lisa and Paul and watching them play out the last couple scenes of their story in the season and it was magical and, it, and, and the things that Jake says to Abby and her reaction just felt to me like I can't believe I finally get to write a reality that I haven't yet lived. <laughs>